Hi, it's Jessica from Chambray Blues. I'm back again to show you how to assemble the spinning wheels quilting block. This particular pattern is part of a kit from Riley Blake for the Cricut. Uh, the pieces were all cut on the Cricut machine and the fabrics are designed by Riley Blake Designs. And I'm gonna show you how to assemble the quilt block. So I had previously done a video on how to cut and assemble the small blocks, the four and a half inch squares. And now we're gonna put it together into the large quilt block. So here's how it works. I have a sample here to follow. And if you don't have um, a, one that you've already made, I suggest looking at the picture on the pattern to make sure that you get the pieces in the right area. So I'm going to use this as a template. I've got uh, white on the bottom and my colors were here. So all of these in this design are similar and that it has white attached to every single piece. So I'm going to follow this by lining up the bottom square here. The top square has to be uh, turned to look like that. And then we're going to do the same process on the other side. I'm just following the block that I had previously made. So once you have them laid out, then you can start sewing. And my preference is to sew the two short inside seams first and then come back and sew the middle seam. So we're going to start with the lower pieces. And I'm going to just fold one piece on top of the other. And when I do that, I am matching the seam allowances so that it's a good tight fit before I put it underneath my sewing machine. I'm using a stitch length of 2.5 and a quarter inch seam allowance. No back tack. Just going to begin sewing. And the piece and sew straight off the piece. So your sewing machine should have uh, a line for a quarter inch seam allowance so that it's easy to follow. So that's what I've got on the lower piece. Now I'm going to do the top piece. Same process, fold it over, match the seam allowances. My seam allowances are pressed to one side if you prefer to press them open, you can do that. And then line it up underneath the needle and sew. Okay, so, and I'm always gonna bring it back and compare it to um, my original block because as you can see it's easy to get it mixed up if I would have turned it this way it would have thrown my whole design off so keep comparing it to your original block and then you won't have problems getting mixed up okay to sew this last seam it's a little bit more difficult because you're going through a thicker seam allowance and it's a little harder to get things lined up so one trick that I learned is that you can take a pin and put it right in the center where those lines meet. So that when you open it, you're sure that it lines up exactly where you want to. And I don't recommend sewing across pins ever in your machine because it breaks needles and it breaks down the machine. So I'll remove the pin before I go across that stitching line. So with my seam allowances, I have them pressed to the side. So when I get to the center, I look at which direction the seam allowance is going underneath the piece and I want the top piece to go the opposite direction so that it sits flat. So I'm just using my fingers to flatten it out. I'm gonna remove the pin. Oh, 
sometimes you have to lift your presser foot a bit and kind of help it through there. And sew it to the edge. And then you can see when you open it, you get a good match in the middle. And one other thing you can do, there's a product on the market that I found recently that I really like. It's called steam -a seam and it's basically narrow fusible tape. So if you have trouble matching your squares the way you want them to, you can use small pieces of this tape and fuse each piece together first before you stitch it. It's a great um, tool. It's really fast and easy to, to do. It'll keep you from having problems with pins in your machine and it'll make everything look really professional. So those are my tips for today. And you can find more on chambrayblues.com. Thanks.